So this video we're going to be talking about inheritance. Like always, I like to start out with the definition. If you're in biology class, you kind of know how inheritance works. Um, in genetics especially, um, you as a child, when you were once a child, or if you are a child now, um, you have gotten half your genes from your dad and half your genes from your mom. So that's kind of how inheritance works. You inherit the genes from your parents. So that's kind of how it is in a science concept. But in a computer science, in an OOP concept, or object-oriented programming, how it works is that you have two classes. One class is the parent class, or the super class, while another parent is the child class, or the subclass. College Board calls them super class and subclass, but I call them parent class and child class. It doesn't matter, but on the exam, you'll hear it call it super class and subclass. So just know that parent means super and child means sub. I call it parent and child, but College Board calls it super sub. That's just how the way that I feel like I like to teach it. Because a lot of people have done biology, um, either AP biology or honors biology in their school, or they probably know a little bit about genetics. So that's kind of why I like to relate it to that. I like to relate it and call it the parent and child class. So in inheritance, once again, you have two classes or you can have another, you can have yeah, two different classes pretty much. One class is your parent class. The other class is your child class. So basic definition. So you got two classes, parent class and the child class. Parent is just another word for the super, so you can hear call it the super class, or a child, which is just subclass. Got that. The child class inherits all of the super classes. body and I put an apostrophe there super classes body I should say that so two classes parent class and the child class the child class inherits all of the super classes body so whatever it is methods the attributes the variables the constructors whatever it is the child class will inherit that to inherit something in Java you use the keyword extends the extends keyword is extremely useful because that is what shows Java. That is what tells Java that you are inheriting a super class. You put the extends keyword in a child class, not on a parent class. We're going to talk a little bit about the extends keyword later. But before, I just want to review OOP or Object Oriented Programming. So we have four concepts, like we said we have inheritance. We got polymorphism. We got encapsulation. And we have abstraction. The four main concepts of OOP or OOP. Must know them. AP doesn't need to know the last one, but if you just want to be a better coder in general, abstraction is extremely useful in many different cases. So yeah, inheritance and polymorphism come in unit nine in the AP curriculum of computer science A. Encapsulation comes in unit five, writing classes, and abstraction is no longer there on the AP exam anymore, which is kind of a which is kind of a relief because it is a little bit difficult to grasp in the first place. So those are the four main OOP concepts. This video is about inheritance. So inheritance, you got two classes. The child class inherits all of the super class's body. This is just another word for saying the parent class. I call it, I just use them interchangeably, so I hope you don't mind. So, that's exactly what it is. So, let's say we have two classes. So, like we said, inheritance, we have two classes, a parent class and a child class. So let's make this our parent class. And let's make this our child class. 
In order for the child class to inherit everything from the parent class, we have to use the extends keyword. The extends keyword is very important as it shows that this is inheriting the class from the parent. And then we can say extends F because F is our, the name of our parent class. So let's say for example, I have made a public integer and I've called it X and I make it equal to seven. All right, then I can come over here. I can create an object out of F. And then what I can do is I can just print. Assume the main method was here. I'm gonna put that in the main method. So that's kind of how that is gonna work. And because this extends that it is able to use and utilize our public integer x and make it equal to seven. Well, that's literally what inheritance is. It was a very short video, but that's inheritance. So we have a question here and our goal is to answer it correctly. So below shows a child class and a parent class. Maddie wants her parent class to contain the members of her entire family, and she wants all of them to be printed through the main method. Maddie has a twin sister, Liv, and two brothers, Joey, Parker, Joey and Parker. Um, she also has a mother named Karen and a father named Pete. So we already know our input data. Our input data is she has a twin sister, Liv. She has two brothers, Joey and Parker. She has a mother named Karen and a father named Pete. So I've kind of already given a blueprint through comments on how we should attack this problem. So the first way to attack this problem is to define our input data. And to do that, what we can do is since we have so many strings, why don't we just put them and wrap them inside a collection? I've only talked about one collection and that's the array. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, what is it? Live. I'm going to get rid of the comments. They're just going to confuse me. There you go. Live. Maddie. Um, Joey. Parker. Karen. Pete. And we're done. So we've done the first step of attacking our problem. We created a string array. We called it the Rooney family and we included all the people of the Rooney family. It's six of them. So we're done with that. Then it says to print the input data using a custom method. So we can make our own method. We can make a protected, let's make a void because we don't really want it to return anything. The Rooney's. All right. And we're going to take it. We're going to make it take in a string array of the Rooney family. And then finally, what we can do is if we want to print them all, we can just do a string s, the Rooney family, and then we can print we're gonna make that a print. It does say that she wants them to print print it all through the main method, and we are gonna do that. We're not gonna we're we're still gonna follow the question. We're still gonna answer it properly. But what we're really gonna do here is we're gonna make a main method in our child class, and we're gonna make an object that will reference that will make a call to these methods, and it will still print them out through the main method if you kind of get it like that. But that's really it with the parent class. We're done with the parent class. Two simple and easy steps. The first step is we made a string array of all the members in the Rooney family. By the way, it's called the Rooney family because all of their last names are Rooney. Second of all, we made a method called the Rooney's that would loop through them and print them because we wanted to print all their names according to the question. So that's it, just two simple steps. Now we're onto our child class. In our child class, the first thing we need to do is before we create an object is we need to make our main method. After that, we can create our object. There we go, we're done, right? Don't worry about that. That just means that we haven't made a call to without we haven't made any calls to it. So just telling to get rid of it. 
All right, so next what we can do is we can simply just do the Rooney's. We can call our method and then the Rooney family. And that should be it. We made our call to the main method. And now we can go ahead and print that. And we're done. We got it. Liv, Maddie, Joey, Parker, Karen, and Pete. And that is our solution. Keep in mind that since this is OOP, I want to demonstrate the concept of creating objects and initializing them. However, you don't really have to create an object. You can just make these static. Static just means it's shared. Um, it doesn't have to belong to an object. It belongs to the class. So then you can just delete these. And then you don't really need the use of this object. You can just delete it. However, since this is OOP, we want to exercise the idea of creating objects. So we're going to do that. And we're not going to make these static. So, oh, I should change this. Yeah, there we go. By the way, I made them protected. I made the access modifier protected just in case it wants to be visible in the subclass or the child class, I should say. So let's go over a question. Maddie wants her parent class to contain the members of her entire family, and she wants them all to be printed through the main method. Yes, they are printed through the main method, and they are defined in the parent class. And that's it. That is kind of a demo in code of how inheritance works. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe. And that's it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.